On the Build Show today, one of my favorite topics, framing. Now, about a year and a half ago, I made a video about a new kind of framing with an insulated stud. This is called a T-stud. But on today's video, we're using a whole nother type of T-stud called the bare naked T-stud. Now, this is a trust stud that replaces one to one a two by six. We've got a lot to talk about today. We're gonna get in a lot of details. We frame the entire house with these T-studs. Today's video is sponsored by T-Stud. Let's get going. All right guys, so what we're talking about today specifically is framing with these right here. This is a T-stud. And basically this is a one-to-one -one replacement for a standard two by six. You're gonna see it's the same exact uh, dimension. That's five and a half inches in depth. But what they've done is because this is a uh, engineered stud, they've taken the advantage of wood's properties by running a two by three perpendicular with another two by three. That way we've got the grain crossed on both of those for the greatest strength. And in fact, in terms of compression, it's a one-to-one -one replacement for framing, but actually these are three times stronger in compression than a standard two by six. But here's the difference. Here's why we want to frame with these. A standard two by six only has a small amount of insulation value. Wood can insulate, but it's around R1 per inch, which means that when we insulate our cavities with you know, whatever kind of insulation is our favorite flavor, you know, we're usually in a two by six, gonna have R19 to maybe R23 insulation in this cavity, but everywhere I've got a solid stud, a solid two by six, I've got about R5, which means that's a thermal bridge. That's a place that heat is gonna transfer easily inside out. In the wintertime, we've got a lot of heat loss through our studs. In the summertime, we've got a lot of heat gain. So by going to this, you can see I've got this big open space here, which means that if I use a continuous insulation, a blown in type insulation, let's say I use closed cell or open cell spray foam, blown in fiberglass, blown in mineral wool, I'm actually gonna be able to insulate this space right here. So now I'm gonna be able to break that thermal bridge and get a much, much higher overall R value where these studs are. Now let's talk about a couple of the specifics. They call this the spline right here. And you can see how they're built. The, the dowel that they're using goes all the way through the spline and then lodges somewhere in between. I'm not sure if it's halfway or what on this side. And then they're using a, a really top grade, I'm assuming this is probably a polyurethane style glue. And then this uh, dowel that they're using also has some ridges on it to accept and really hold on to that glue. Now when we frame this house, we didn't use them in every single location. You're gonna notice I've got my kings and my jacks, I've got a uh, double top plate and uh, single or double bottom plate in solid stone lumber. But there's a bunch of different options for framing these. While we're talking about framing though, I'd be remiss not to bring my frame carpenter, Bill Wood, on to talk about the specifics of how you work with these. So let's go find Bill. Bill, what's up, buddy? Hey, man, how are Guys, you? Guys, if you don't know Bill, you obviously haven't been watching my channel for very long. Bill and I, have been building together for about a dozen years. There's a couple of YouTube videos that we look like kids on them, Bill. <laughs> well, We've aged a little bit over the years. That's right. Um, but Bill, talk to me about framing with T-studs and how this is different than, let's say, framing with a standard two by six. Well, uh, you know, it's, it's different because of, just because of the way it's shaped. Um, mm -hmm. But honestly, it, it, it was our first time doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, you brought the idea up and I thought, well, yeah, let's give it a try. It makes a lot of sense uh, for many different reasons. Uh, and for us, in the way that we did, uh, we approached it on this particular frame job, it wasn't much change at all. Yeah. And we actually like them. Um, there's a lot of benefit to them. And tell me about straightness. You know, I know people are wondering how straight are these? What happens if you get crooked ones? What did you find? Did you find a lot of coal in the, in the pile or no? Actually, no. We were concerned about that. Mm -hmm. You know, when we, um, when we were helping unload these things and stack them, we thought, oh man, are these gonna stay straight for mm -hmm. us? And, you know, we had to keep them under a tarp for a little bit, um, but surprisingly, they were great, you know, the- And what the, do you attribute that to? Why are they straighter? Well, because it's straight. engineered. Yeah. It's engineered. Yeah. What, the, what the guys at the manufacturer told us was that 
um, you know, they, they build these in a jig, mm -hmm. so they actually clamp them down, uh, and then they run their, their, uh, their hole bore through there, and then, uh, and then they run those dowels through with glue, and that actually locks them in place. Yeah, those are some beefy looking dowels. I don't know what species that is, but they look really strong. They're great, they're great. And um, you also notice they come all the way through on the spline, so that dowel's coming all the way in there, which I'm assuming is gonna help really lock that lumber in place. Yeah, it, it, it just makes sense, it does. And I like the alternate orientation, and speaking of which, talk to me about running that, because you've got this two and a half inch face and an inch and a half face. Tell me about why we chose running them that way and what else we could have done. Well, you know, there's a lot of information on their website. Yeah, they got a good um, website. And, you know, just in conversations with them, they, there's, there's so many different orientations you can choose. Yep. We were kind of selfish and we choose, <laughs> chose the, the wide flange on the outside, partially yeah, so. because we've got zip R and then we're going to have a rain screen. Yeah, and then uh, we've got Hardy going outside of that too. So we've got a lot attaching on the outside of the building. That two and a half inch flange is a nice benefit. Right, and we, we always attach everything on the exterior of the house to the stud. Yeah. And so right. we never just allow the sheathing to, to be our attachment To carry, point. that's exactly. right. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. But so, the layout is the same. You know, it's like you pull your 16 inch layout and it, and it lays out the same interior and exterior. It's just that the flange portion, whether you orient it inside or outside, it's gonna have a wider nailing surface. Yeah, and we could have oriented those inside. Let's say if this was a kitchen wall and we were hanging cabinets here, we could have flopped that two and a half face to this side, so we'd have a little bit more meat for the cabinet maker uh, to attach to, or the cabinet installer, I should say. Or you could also alternate them where you've got one this way and one's alternating on size. But I thought it made the most sense to do this. Now, Bill, let's talk a little bit about top and bottom plates on this job and why we decided to go this way. Well, we, uh, we talked about using Zip R mm -hmm. on this, uh, on this uh, project. Um, and because it was our first project with the T-Stud, mm -hmm. uh, we thought, let's just simplify this a little bit. Let's just, let's go to a solid top plate, a solid bottom plate and uh, kings and cripples as well for the windows. Yeah, so we've got, this is a remodel, kind of an oddball house. Um, we could have easily done a single bottom plate. We did a double, stay tuned for future videos about that, but we could have used a single uh, pressure treated bottom plate. Ignore that there's a double down there for now. And then the double top plate, we could have gone a T-stud for the first top plate, and then probably by code, we would have gone to a solid uh, second top plate, right? For now, if we would have done that, though, we also would have had to cut our studs uh, a little bit differently. Right. right, you just bank this one a little shorter so it lays down flat. Right, but we decided to go ahead and cut them flush and do a standard double top plate. And part of our thinking was, we're gonna use this Zip R, which has insulation bonded to zip sheathing. So we've got that additional thermal break at all our double top plates, at our bottom plate, at our headers, things like that. Check out their website, by the way. There's lots of really good details if you wanted to use these for bottom plates, top plates, and even headers. And while we're talking headers, let's walk over here, Bill, and tell me about these headers. Now, just for uh, uh, understanding on the video, I had Bill frame through these just for weatherproofing purposes. Um, so this is a window opening here. And this LVL header you're seeing up here, talk to me about how you, how you built those, Bill. Uh, okay, so we had made also just discussing the plans for the, for the house and how we wanted it to be. Um, I think the engineer called out two by six standard lumber. Mm -hmm. um, and we decided to go with LVL. Uh, and what we did though, it's a five and a half inch wall structure, so a two by six. Mm -hmm. We used two LVLs. And LVLs, remember, are inch and three quarters, Inch and right? three quarters, so that nets us three and a half inches. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to get two inches of foam in the middle of that LVL. That's right, so if you look down on that header, you can see we've got two inch foam in between there. Right. And that's a poly ISO we actually had left over from another job. Right, and then we did a squash block, an inch and a half squash block at the bottom of that header to kind yeah. of tie all that together. Yeah, so that header now is bearing on that squash block which is bearing on these jacks, and then these kings are also solid as well. Right. Um, and I like the solid kings and jacks because now my window install, which by the way, this house is gonna have some kind of non-standard flangeless windows that we're gonna screw into the jam, which means I've got all solid lumber. Everything's kind of straightforward there. It was gonna pose some significant waterproofing and air. Air yeah, the air sitting has got to be yeah, tight. I also want to uh, say huge uh, praise to Bill and his crew. 
Uh, we've been doing this sloped sub sill detail now for, I don't know, maybe 10 years, Bill. Yeah. All he's doing is cutting these uh, cripples, right? Am I saying mm, that right? Yeah. Cripples. Cutting these cripples underneath the window sill at about a, what, five degree bevel Three or so? Three to five. Three, Three to five. five. Yeah. So that now this is pre-sloped. We don't have to put a, a beveled cedar piece onto a flat sill. We're already sloped. We'll do some videos on this window install later. But really the framing, if you look at it and you kind of pan around the house, it looks like kind of normal framing except for this trust stud, right? It, yeah, we, did, we didn't lose a step with it at all. And especially because of the decision that we made to go with the standard plates and the standard uh, kings and cripples. I don't think that if we had decided to use the T-stud in the king and cripple and say header or plate locations, it would have slowed us down much, mm -hmm. but because it's our first time, we just wanted to kind of simplify things a bit. Yeah, I like that. Great product. Yeah, it worked out real well. And I like, because we've got standard framing, things like you know where our rafters are coming through here and hitting that double top plate, you know, we can do standard details to tie our rafter to our top plate. Now we're using a slightly newer product from Fasten Master on this house where we're actually sinking a big screw in there. But you could now, because we've got standard lumber, also use a, a hurricane tie just a little faster using some of the newer technology from Fasten Master uh, on that tie down. Any last thoughts from you, Bill, from a framer's perspective on T-sets? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> so often I'm reluctant to use new stuff because yeah. I've been doing this for so long in one particular way, but these have been great and you've been helpful with helping introduce new stuff for us and, and new ways of doing things and we appreciate that. And yeah, no, and the guys, the guys who supplied them to us were fantastic. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Bill and I have been doing this a long time together. We, uh, even though Bill works for other builders and not just me, I always feel like Bill's a part of my team and obviously is a big part of my success. So Bill, really appreciate all your hard work over the years. Let me transition uh, now to talking about a couple of nerd stats. I'll meet you back at the desk. All right, before I get into the stats, actually one more thing on the framing. Uh, we just used the T-studs on the exterior walls. I went to standard two by four framing on the interior walls, but notice this ladder framing. Bill and the crew did a real nice job. We used those T-studs for where walls intersect with outside walls. And then let's talk for a minute about the trades when they come. You know, when the electricians and the plumbers come, they've got this inch and a half void in here. So the electricians, they're really not gonna have to do any drilling, coring, sawing, any of that kind of stuff. It also means they're not going to have to do any sweeping, which is kind of nice. But when the plumber comes, if he's got bigger pipes than that, he's going to have to be a little cautious, right? We don't want to do any uh, damage to this outer flange. We only want to take out the spline if we're going to do any cutting or coring. Let's say if we needed to put a two or two and a half inch pipe through this wall. We also want to make sure the dowels are intact. We do not want to take out any dowels. And as we think about cutting this spline, the maximum amount on their website shows no more than one and one quarter inch before we've got a problem, meaning we're, we've cut down the structural integrity. It also says on the website that you could, in theory, take out one dowel, but no more than that. I would say don't take out the dowels. Be really cautious about laying out your electrical, your plumbing, so you don't take out any dowels. But here's the fix if you needed to do that. You would basically take another T-stud and you would lace that T-stud up against the other one and you would form a column with those two T-studs. And then you would actually put like a three and a half inch screw here to combine these two members. And then this is gonna give you that structural integrity. Of course, you could also lace in a full uh, size one, top to bottom, but no need to do that. You could probably go two feet top and bottom of that, screw it together, and then you've got that structural integrity. Now, you're gonna have to get an engineer involved if you go too high, so be cautious about that. Okay, next let's talk insulation. What are you gonna use when you insulate this? You know, if you bought the original T-stud, which is uh, this one, they call this the R19 T-stud, this is gonna come pre-foamed, and you're gonna go ahead and just put, you know, standard bat insulation, let's say. But I think the big beauty of this bare naked T-stud that we're framing with on this house is that I could use something like a continuous insulation so that I, let's say if I use closed cell foam, I could have a continuous thermal break on the whole outside of the building. The other nice thing about closed cell foam is it's gonna add a lot of structural integrity. Now you could of course use open cell foam too, you're just not gonna get that structural benefit like you would have closed cell foam. But because it's open, you could also use blown in fiberglass, 
blown in mineral wool, cellulose insulation, even blown in wool, let's say, if you wanted to. And that's the beauty in my mind of using the zip system sheathing on the outside. It's a perfect marriage with these T-studs because when I tape and maybe use a little bit of liquid flash on the outside, I've got a really, really tight envelope. I don't need to use spray foam on the inside for air tightness. I've got that really airtight layer on the outside. And again, I chose that Zip R sheathing on this house because I've got now a thermal break at that double top plate. Uh, and while I'm thinking about that, I did want to mention on the video, see those two by four blocks that are on the flat? Those are blocks at seam transitions. Uh, so we ran our Zip R sheathing vertically on this house and then did um, blocking there solid on the flat so that I could solid nail in my zip bar sheathing at the top. Your sheathing is gonna orient depending on your climate zone or your wind loads. In our case, I don't have a lot of wind loads, so it's okay for me to run that vertically. Okay, next, let's talk about how you could get them and what do they cost. This is a hard question, I gotta tell you. Uh, this is a company that uh, has seen some serious demand. Uh, even since I published my build show a year and a half ago, uh, they've seen a huge amount of inquiries. A lot of builders wanna get them. Frankly, they're not super easy to get right now. They're totally sold out for the remainder of 2020, but there are, there's a wait list and you can get on that wait list and you can actually get in line to get a package uh, delivered to your job site. The best way to do that is to go to their website, tstud.com, and sign up uh, for not only their newsletter, but you can get information from the website there and make an inquiry about getting on the list so that you can get them from your, for your job site. I think in the future, in coming years, these are gonna be stocked at local lumber yards. That's not the case today, unless you're in uh, you know, their home state of Minnesota or somewhere near the plant where they're making them in Iowa, you're probably not gonna find these stocked in your lumber yard. But make an inquiry. I think this is a really interesting framing product that really has the potential to change the amount of efficiency we get from really pretty standard construction. And I think that's why they've seen the demand just absolutely skyrocket. Uh, in only four years or so being on the marketplace. Guys, big thanks to T-Stud for sponsoring today's video. Um, really, really nice people over there, great people to work with. Get on their website, lots, lots more information, lots of videos as well. It has been really fun building a house with this. I think this is definitely the framing of the future. Stay tuned for more from those guys as they expand their manufacturing operations and uh, are building both bare naked studs and the original R19 stud in Iowa. But this is a premium product. You're gonna pay more for this than a standard uh, two by six stud. I think the benefit's definitely there. And of course, lumber fluctuates. Lumber's at a crazy all time high right now. So a lot of builders are evaluating engineered options like T-stud and others uh, because that cost differential between standard framing lumber, solid sawn lumber and engineered has really come down uh, in terms of the delta between those as we've seen lumber rise. I'm hopeful that in the coming year, we're gonna see those lumber prices come back down. And speaking of framing, there's lots more framing talk on buildshownetwork.com. If you're not familiar, that's the website that I started about a year ago, and I've got several other builders and another architect shooting videos at their job sites. Lots of good framing talk on buildshownetwork.com. Sign up for our newsletter. We send that out every Friday, and it'll tell you what's new on buildshownetwork.com. Otherwise, hit that subscribe button. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.